The 19th stanza of Psalm 119 is one that is very powerful, and it deals with the help that we can obtain from the Word of God. In verses 145 through 152, we find David saying, I cried with all my heart, answer me, O Lord. I will observe your statutes. I cried to you, save me and I shall keep your testimonies. I rise before dawn and I cry for help. I wait for your words. My eyes anticipate the night watches that I may meditate on your word. Hear my voice according to your loving kindness. Revive me, O Lord, according to your ordinances. Those who follow after wickedness draw near. They're far from your law. You are near, O Lord, and all your commandments are truth. Of old I have known from your testimonies that you have founded them forever. In thinking about the words that David says here, the psalmist is emphasizing the power of prayer. However, as we should expect at this point in this psalm, we cannot appeal to God without having regard for his word. Friends, we see that prayer is very important to God's people. There in verses 145 through 147, David talks about crying with all of his heart, crying out and asking God to save him and to help him. In verse 149, he's asking God to hear his voice and revive him. But as we begin this discussion, we need to keep in mind that this entire psalm is really a long prayer offered to God. And in these verses, the psalmist is making several points specifically about prayer. First, we see that prayer is to be directed to God. David said, I cried to you, referring to the fact that his prayer is being addressed to God the Father. Jesus taught this when he offered a model for prayer. He said, pray then in this way, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Matthew 6 and verse 9. When Paul wanted his thorn in the flesh to be removed, he implored the Lord three times that it might leave, 2 Corinthians 12, verses 7 through 8. Other examples from the Bible, both in the Old and the New Testaments, could also be given to this effect. And what we see throughout the Bible is that prayer is to be offered to God. There's no authority for us to pray to angels, to saints, to Jesus, to the Holy Spirit, or to anyone else but only to God the Father. Secondly, we see that prayer must come from the heart. David said, I cried with all my heart. Now Jesus condemned the use of vain or meaningless repetitions in prayer in Matthew 6 and verse 7. And this means that we should not mindlessly recite prayers by rote. And while this might be the application that immediately comes to mind, Jesus' teaching also means that we should not ramble thoughtlessly in our prayers either. Regardless of whether a prayer is structured or unstructured, it must be heartfelt. And we should follow the example of Hannah as she was praying before the Lord. She poured out her soul before the Lord. 1 Samuel uh, chapter 1 verses 12 through 15. Everything that we do in service to God must be from the heart according to Ephesians 6 and verse 6. And if our prayers are not offered in this way, then we're like the Pharisee in Jesus' parable who stood and was praying to himself, not to God, Luke 18 and verse 11. Third, prayer must be a priority in our lives. David said that he would rise before dawn and cry for help. The first thing that David would do on any given day was to pray to God. Now, this is not to say that prayer must be the first thing that we do in the morning. God has not given specific times of the day that his people are supposed to pray. But it must be a regular practice for us. Paul wrote that we're to pray without ceasing in 1 Thessalonians 5.17. And when Jesus gave his instructions about prayer, he repeatedly said, When you pray, not if you pray. It's expected that God's people will regularly pray to Him. And prayer is one of the practices in which the early Christians continued steadfastly. And so offering prayers to God must be a priority 
for us. Friends, we want to thank you for joining us for our program today and have a blessed day.